Hi folks, welcome back. Tonight we're going to continue with milling on the uh, Bridgeport 48 inch mill table. The uh, table's been done on the top, I flipped it over and I've done three of the sides on the dovetails. Got three more to go but I think you'll enjoy this. I also want to take a few minutes of your time to explain some of the things that I've done and I've gotten a lot of comments everywhere from Don leaning on the arm to uh, Bose. I'm going to go all through that and I'm going to show you what the finish will look like when I'm through that. Tonight I have a sponsor, Skillshare. Now I take your viewership very seriously. I will never recommend a product that I don't actually use or recommend. Uh, I just wouldn't do that to you. So when I was asked by Skillshare to talk about their products, I went and looked them up. I checked everywhere. I can't find any negative reviews and I think it's something that most of you folks would like to know about. In fact, you're here on this channel because you like to learn new things. See how things are done. Well, I do too. In fact, my whole life, you know, when I grew up, we didn't have the internet. We had the Encyclopedia Britannica and, and school uh, uh, libraries and, and nothing like we have today. You live in wonderful times. And I think Skillshare is a perfect match for finding things that you like to do. Uh, personally, I'm taking a class right now on Skillshare. Acting tips. Now, Don says I really need a lot of acting classes, but uh, I like to act in community theaters, and I found this section, and I'm in love with it. As we go on, about once a month, I'll do a new video for you, and, and I'll show you what's happening in my class and, and, and what you could expect. So I hope you check out Skillshare. There's a link down below in the description that will take you and get you a free trial. I really like it and I think you will too. Back to the comments section of the last two videos. I read all your comments. If I have time, I respond. And I do appreciate it. Thank you. Number one comment. By far. Don leaning on the dang planer. Oh, we shouldn't ever let Don lean on the planer. In fact, I think I should severely discipline him That'll be coming up soon, I hope. But what folks don't understand is this isn't a Bridgeport mill or a lathe. This is a 28,000 pound machine that's bolted to the concrete, leveled perfectly all the way through. This column up here weighed 8,000 pounds without any of the tooling on it. It's made for this 600 pound head to slide all the way over here and take the forces of cutting. It can cut a half inch deep if it wants, maybe three quarters of an inch. I haven't ever pushed it that hard. So Don, doing this to it, doesn't matter on this machine. I will take care of Don for doing it. And Don said I should show you guys, and so I'm going to get out my little camera. And we're going to do a little test. Now this is an indicator I've set up on the... And I'm going to set it to zero. This is not cheap when this is a Matoyo. It's a 0 .0005 thousandths of an inch indicator. I'm going to get it down to zero. It's touching that surface right there. And I'm going to lean on it. I didn't see it move a drop, did you? In fact, I'm going to push on it. I didn't see it move either. Oh well, I guess Don gets to live another day. Now the second thing I've read on the internet was, why are you doing this inside lip of the dovetail? 
This is the side it was bent. Yes, this was bowed with both ends drooping like this, eight thousandths of an inch. And it's because the T-slots are peened under the bottom. And as you peen those T-slots by tightening things up on those T-nuts, it stretches the top where the bottom stays undisturbed. Well, this stretch top makes the whole thing bend over years. And if the whole thing is bending, this surface in here is certainly bending also. I've seen two or three comments says, well, you shouldn't have to do those because they'll be straight. They won't be. And here is a little bit of a, an exaggeration. Say this is straight and it's bent at an angle, a 42 degree angle there. And I take and I well, try to raise it. I get both ends and I bend it. What happens? It bows out. Well, that's what that cast iron table is doing. This is bowed out some. Another viewer said, well, you need to check it in the middle and all both ends. If you do that, you screw up because this is bowed. And I don't know how much it's bowed or which direction. I just know it's bowed. So what I do is I take and I line the tool up on each end and I use the tip of that tool to scribe a mark. Show a picture of it here. As you can see right there, I've got a line that's equal all the way down the side of this V right here. And I'm using this tool to scribe that line. And it turns out it's a 42 degree angle according to the dial on this machine. sequel down on the other end I don't care about the middle because remember this thing was bowed so once I have it like that on both ends I know that both ends are equal and the middle will be plain so that's equal and when I get the same mark on both ends I know that this surface is parallel to the table and at the right angle and at the right depth. So if I take and get this surface on that end and the far end perfect, it will plane that bow out. So this will be straight all the way through. And the reason you want that is because you got a gib. You tighten up that gib and it can be loose in the center and tight on the ends or tight on the ends and loose in the center. You want it to be perfectly the same dimension all the way through. So that's why I do it underneath here. Now, this is a planer. A grinder can do the same function and give you a better surface finish. But I don't really care about the surface finish at this stage of the game because this is going to be hand scraped. Let me get the key. Is a straight edge with an angle on it. Richard King makes these, and I've been planing them for years. This one has been hand scraped. Let me take a picture of the surface. That has been scraped. And the opposite side, the flat has been scraped. This is a perfect surface. I put it on that surface plate over there, which is a triple A surface plate. And we work on it until it comes to this finish. Now, you may want to look over here. That top finish, this was just where I got enough material out of the way so it doesn't touch when I lower this. This is not a bearing surface. This is just the part that supports this dovetail. Well, I don't care what that looks like at all. These surfaces I do. If you look over here, you see this surface right here. It's kind of rough looking. 
Well, if you notice over here on this planer table, you see these little lines? That's these same lines that are left here. And you leave them on a table like this so you don't have a complete flat surface that uh, your, your work pieces will stick to. You need to be able to move things around on the table. So these are all done like that. And you see it down, down the length there. This is a th to a thousandth of an inch on this table. And it's got some battle scars from before I got it. But they really don't mean anything as long as you keep them uh, stoned down. No burrs. This surface is what it looks like now when I took it off of the machine. That surface right there is planed on both of those two. And what we're going to do is plane this surface in this. And then we hand scrape it. And I use power scrapers to make that pattern and surface. Looks great, doesn't it? I'll be right back. Well, you can't see down here. Well, I'm gonna shoot you down here. All right, this is a heavy mama. This is a, another Richard King straight edge. This is a two foot angle with two angles. This is a four foot. And this is the way that one looked when I first got it. This one is going to come up for a planing job on the next couple of videos. The reason is I need this edge to test this edge under here. I don't have a four foot and I may do with smaller ones, three foot and all, but this one's sitting there. So I'm going to pay Richard for it and plane it up and then we'll hand scrape it and we'll have a nice thing like that. Anyway, that's to come. Tonight we're going to finish planing this one and I'm going to get a hernia while I take this away. God. And this isn't even the heaviest one. I have a four foot over there that doesn't have the single edge. It's not made by Richard King. It weighs twice what this does. Anybody want to buy it? Wouldn't have to go to exercise class like I do. I'm going to go the other way. I'm going to have to just drag it back here. All right, the machine's warmed up. Let's get okay, to here's where it gets tricky. I have a cutter in the tool holder that I can reach underneath that dovetail with. If you watch, this kicks up at the end of the stroke. Well, I usually have to pick that up so that it doesn't hit the top of it coming back. Now, I'm not going to use the automatic feed down. I don't trust it that much on this short of an area. But what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to line it up on the edge and then I will index it down as I go along that 42 degree angle. Perfect there. 
going to run it down the length here and see if that's where I want it. pretty even cut through there. I'm going to back it off some. So I backed it off to where it's just barely touching the surface. And now I want to show you a little trick I learned. It keeps me from screwing up. Just involves a simple block of wood and a clamp. Now, I have this speed where I want it, I think, or really close. But we're not going to move this feed from where it is. We're going to be moving this angle down. So I don't want to get confused. As you saw, I put a little block of wood to keep the, the head from traveling to the left or your right or over that way any farther because we're now going to use the angle 42 degree feed to go down that face and I found that when you're doing this sometimes you get confused because you don't do it day after day after day and I have moved the wrong lever Starting it up. I need a brighter light.
can get down in there where there's a little a pocket in the back and so you can scrape it off. That's the surface finish we achieved by that. And as you may see, I took real fine cuts up under here, went all the way across and into that little V. Now I can take and hand scrape or power scrape all these parts, make it look like it's straight edge. No, you enjoyed that. My butt sore. Things like this get real tedious. You might have noticed I had to babysit this machine. You have to do it in the right order. You're not going to be happy with the finish. Get the big old jaws out of it. Okay. Well, folks, we now have one half of this bottom done. I just like this surface and this surface and basically it's a repeat of these other surfaces. Now I'll use my planer gauge to set up on here and that'll get me rough. And once I start planing it, I can then use a, a dial indicator uh, and go through here and check everything to make sure it's the same. Because basically I'm cutting this on a big surface plate. That's the really nice thing about a planer. Now, I mentioned a few times power scraping and handscaping. This is a Biax scraper made by Dapra Corp. I think you can still buy these in Switzerland, if Switzerland is still there. And this is a motorized tool that you basically hold it like this and it has a tool blade that has a carbide tip on the end and this goes into this end and basically you do this to the surface until you're finished. It's a whole technique about it. Richard King uh, still does scraping casts, I believe. You can look him up if you're interested. Anyway, if you're going to do hand scraping, you got to have one of these. I have another one that's for the, the oil pockets called a flaker. But that'll come up soon on the next video. Thank you for watching.